Alright, well I'm making this video today to uh, clear up a couple of questions that uh, have come up over the uh, the past year or so. Um, one of them is uh, multi-stage compressors and um, just kind of what their function is all about. Um, this here is a two-stage compressor and it's just a two-cylinder two-stage compressor. Uh, the low pressure cylinder is the is the big cylinder and that's the one right here. And the high pressure cylinder is the smaller one on the back side here. And basically, uh, with a any two stage air compressor, the actual um, displacement or the capacity is only what the low pressure piston can put out. The, the the actual large piston right here. That's where all the air is being made. Really, the whole capacity of the machine is on the low pressure side. Uh, the high pressure side just boosts the pressure higher. So keep that in mind and if it's multiple stages uh, beyond two it's typically a high pressure application beyond 500 psi because most two-stage reciprocating air compressors will build to at least 500 psi um, so if you see a three-stage unit or a four or five or even higher than that they just that's just for higher and higher higher pressure um, even if it's a, a three-cylinder two-stage both of the two low pressure cylinders pump into the high pressure cylinder so uh, don't get confused because it's got three cylinders it's it's a three stage because it's really only two stage um, so I hope that clears up some confusion on that this is the Quincy I rebuilt it's you know it sits outside and, and we are down here in Florida things do rust up a little bit so but she still runs really nice does, a great, does everything I want it to do that's for sure um, that oil pump just holds pressure in there. It's a cold day. You can see how it's just slowly, slowly dropping on that gauge. But uh, that just means that whole system there, the whole pressure system, is really super tight. And the oil's thick, too. But at any rate. Uh, then the next question has been on wiring. And I've been a little uh, reluctant to, uh, to actually get into that uh, because of, you know, it is a dangerous thing, you know. And... Uh, and you got to have a lot of respect for anything that uh, you can't see that can kill you dead as a wedge. Um, and probably uh, these 230 volt systems like this are probably a little bit more dangerous than the 480 volt systems. Uh, just for the simple fact that uh, when these have a ground fault, uh, if, if the ground wire isn't connected, that's why the ground wire is so damn important on anything. Um, if the ground wire is not connected and one of the hot legs goes to ground uh, and the ground wire is not connected is all it's going to do is energize the whole piece of equipment so it's not going to energize it's not going to be a, it's going to be 230 volt that's going to be on the system it's going to be 110 volt because if you take 110 to, or excuse me 230 volt to ground you get 110 so uh, the ground wire is ultra important don't ever run any piece of equipment without a ground wire period it's just it's just it's just a terrible thing to do uh, and I'm going to show you how to actually wire in a single phase uh, 230 volt starter with a compressor. And uh, I just want to show you a couple of quick safety tips with the meter first. All right, so you always want to work with a good meter, and uh, that's you know the only way you're going to know if there's power there or not. And what I always do is you know the first click here is going to give you your AC volts. This is just a fluke meter, but rather than just trusting the meter and just saying okay let's go check our voltage I always take the thing and I put it in the ohm mode right here and make sure that it actually the leads are actually working good I've, I've actually got myself <laughs> shocked one time just because of the simple fact that uh, these leads you know I mean they, they got these little connections right here and I mean they do get to the point where they lose connection so uh, you know what good is a meter if it doesn't work or if, if, if one of the leads isn't working so I, I always make sure and just check it on the ohm selection like this and that way you know darn well everything's working fine now you can go ahead and reach your voltage all right so i'm just going to check power here this is pretty damn simple and basic l1 l2 we've got excuse me here 237 volts right on the well, it's fluctuating a little bit on the tent side of things and like i said here if you take one side of 230 and go to ground excuse me and go to ground, get a good ground here, and go inside here. There's 120 volts right there. Go to the other side, same thing, 118, 120. I'm just going to 
disconnect the power and I'm going to show you how this is wired in. Alright, so you just want to go ahead and check it again here and make sure that uh, you have disconnected the power and we're here to zero. You always want to check um, from one leg to ground and the other leg to ground just to make sure uh, sometimes a breaker may not open all the way and just leave one leg attached and uh, uh, so you won't know for sure going across the two legs on top. Um, so at any rate, um, so this is basically how it's wired. Um, what you want to do here is um, basically go from L1 to one side of the coil, okay, and then from basically L2 here, you're going to go to one side of the overloads, the other side of the overloads goes to one side of the pressure switch over here. The other side of the pressure switch goes up to this optional on-off switch right here. And the other side of the on-off switch goes all the way back up to the other side of the coil and that's what completes the circuit. Um, keep in mind here, um, the pressure switch and the set of overloads are nothing more than switches um, that open or close and that's what starts and stops the, the motor, uh, in this case that's driving the compressor. Uh, if you had like a low oil pressure switch, you would tie it right in this line right here, or anywhere in this line. You could break this line and attach it here. It would act the same darn way. So um, that's basically how you would wire that in. And if it was 480 volt, uh, what would change here would be the coil would, voltage would go from 230 volt to 480 volt, and you'd have one more leg, and then you had three sets of heaters. Uh, in this case. Being that it's single phase, we only really need one heater, so that's why that's like that. Um, so hopefully that clears up some uh, confusion with that. And I also have a little pictorial diagram that I put together to show you how it's actually uh, wired. It's not a wiring diagram per se, um, just for the simple fact that if you can't read a wiring diagram, obviously you wouldn't be asking me how to wire one of these things. So I'll show you uh, what the little pictorial wiring diagram looks like, which will make maybe this a little bit even easier. All right, so here's the pictorial diagram. Um, here's your incoming power right here with the ground. And basically you're gonna go from uh, L1 to one side of the coil, and L2 to basically it's going backwards here in this diagram. But at any rate, it's all the same. We're just going from, it doesn't matter which way you go, but at any rate, we're going from L2 to one side of the the switch, the other side of the switch to one side of the pressure switch, the other side of the pressure switch back to one side of the overloads, the other side of the overloads goes all the way back up to the coil. So and that's what completes the circuit, but you could switch these two around. You could put this overload one on two and you could put this switch on the coil. So it really doesn't matter which way you do it, um, but this is just the way I end up doing it this way, but it really wouldn't matter. And here's some directions right here. You can freeze your computer and have a little look at that. Beg my scratch, but I think you can read it. So, at any rate, hope that helps out. And uh, any comments, just go ahead and leave them and I'll answer them.